Have a great day, everyone. Welcome again to another series of lecture in the professional education subject, building and enhancing new literacies across the curriculum. So this time we are going to talk about module three, the new literacies, functional literacy and multi-literacy. Before we start, no, I uh, would like to greet everyone. Have a great day. And I hope that you are fine right now and keep safe always. So before we proceed, no, I would like to thank you for all who so supported my channel. And if this is your first time to visit my channel, you can subscribe and click the subscribe button below. And of course, you can also click the notification bell for you to be updated. And you can watch all the future uploads for discussions and lectures on professional education and other social sciences subjects. So this time we're talking about new literacies, functional literacy, and multi-literacy. So to start, let's define what is new literacies, although we have uh, discussed this already. Um, the new literacies is also associated of the 21st century skills. So the new literacies refer to new forms of literacy made possible by digital technology development. So if you try to look at you know, uh, the new literacies is far from the definition of the basic literacy. If you try to look at and remember the definition of basic literacy, it simply states that it is all about knowing how to read, to write, and of course, um, to, um, to compute, no? or reading, writing, and arithmetic. But in the new literacies, li literacies no? it is a new forms of literacy, which is made possible because of the digital technology, because of the technology that we are using right now. So that's the main reason why uh, new literacies uh, emerge. Commonly recognized example include instant messaging, blogging, social networking, podcasting, photo sharing, digital storytelling, and conducting online searches. So if you try to scrutinize those following uh, examples of, of uh, digital technology developments, this could also be used in the delivery of instruction. But because in the 21st century, our learners are very, uh, are what we call uh, native, uh, digital natives. So we can use this one like blogging, social networking, podcasting as a platform of learning, like conducting online classes. And you can also search for information in a different uh, online so uh, online search uh, platform like Google, YouTube, and many other. Between 1950s to 1970s, the development of literacy, both operational and functional, was established. So um, it is also in connection no, of, of functional literacy to the new literacy. No? What else? So next, we have this one. During this period, literacy was defined as reading and writing skills necessitated for activities in the modern city. At first, literacy was used in various types, such as computer literacy, technology literacy, internet literacy, media literacy, respectively. So meaning to say, uh, because of the changes and the development of technology, uh, literacy was being, uh, the word literacy right now is being associated to this kind of activities, like we need to become computer literate, you know, technology literate, internet literate. You know? Even our young learners right now are very literate when it comes to utilization of technology, computer, and of course, in the internet. Literacy is not confined only to knowing how to read and write. That was the, the, the definition of literacy uh, from the previous years. That's basic literacy, but today, because of the new concept of literacy, it goes to, to more than what we want to know just to read and to write. Rather, it is a matter of applying the knowledge 
that you have acquired for specific purposes in particular particular context. Okay, so according to these researchers and experts, a word that literacies intend to generate and communicate meanings through the medium of encoded text. So it is not just simply reading and writing, but the text that being encoded should be should be used as ways of communication in various contexts and discourses. Okay. According to Crest of 2003, literacy can only happen when having, um, when having a kind of potential content through interaction with the text. Particular text can be perceived for being connected or related. It is not simply recognizing the letters in the word, but it should be a perceiving, a connected or a relationship of the different texts to convey an information or communication. Although such meaning can be more rational than literal or expressing solidarity or affinity with particular people. Okay, literacy can bear a coding system that can capture the meaning, such as the word literacy within language or recognition of alphabetical alphabetic symbols. Okay, so we discussed already the, ba the basic uh, definition of uh, literacy according to different researchers. So our first questions for our um, exit part, uh, you will define, you know, give me your own understanding, the meaning of new literacies. So that's our first question. We will be still having two more questions in the middle and at the end of the to continue, subject-specific literacies are recognized to require the application of the specialized knowledge and skills, information skills, and the creative and imaginative language. 21st century literacy combines cross-cultural, cross-curricular capabilities, also called as multi-literacies. So as future teacher, as a future educator, um, you should be a multi-literate teacher. So these new literacies are being combined. No? So that is called cross-curricular capabilities or also called referred to new literacies. These new literacies are fused with traditional print, liter print literacy to create opportunities and enable students to under, understand and use the new text types while exploring knowledge and information with a wide array of technological tools. So we have now the technological tools, such as blogging, writing, producing, mimicking, photoshopping, anime, music videos. These are the current uh, technology, um, technology, um, technology tools that could be used by our learners and especially to us, to us teachers, okay? So let us now try to explore the different uh, literacies or the new literacies in the 21st centuries. According to this, we have seven new literacies that are stressed in the 21st century curriculum. So let us try to look at the seven literacies that are stressed in the 21st century. So here we have multicultural literacy, social literacy, media literacy, financial literacy, digital literacy, ecological literacy, and creative literacy. So let's start with multicultural literacy. It is all about understanding ethnic groups that comprise, that comprise the population and focuses on the complex issue of diversity and citizenship. So as a future teacher, these are what we call different literacies, multi-literacies that uh, uh, future educators should possess so that they could understand the diverse learners that they, will be, that they will be handling in the future. So you need to understand the diversity of our learners, you know? uh, issues when it comes to culture. So that's about multicultural literacy. So we need to become more sensitive with the different cultures of our learners. Second, we have social literacy. It is development of social skills 
knowledge and positive values in human beings to act positively and respond responsibly in sophisticated, complex social settings. Third one, media literacy. It is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate, and create media. By the way, there are specific discussions and lectures on this following multiliteracies. So I will not go thoroughly on the definition, just I would like to read that one uh, that is very self-explanatory. But don't worry, because there will be some discussions on, on the specific discussions on this following multiliteracy or new literacies. Number four, financial literacy. Ability to make informed judgment and make effective decisions regarding the use and management of money and other resources. Number five, di digital literacy is the ability to effectively use digital devices for purpose of communication, expression, collaboration, and advocacy in knowledge-based society. Number six, ecological literacy is understanding the principles of ecosystems towards sustainability. And the uh, seventh one, creative literacy is the ability to make original ideas that have value and the ability to see the world in new ways. So these are just the among the seven, among the multi-literacies that is very important to develop to our learners and definitely also to us as future teachers, you as a future teachers. So the truth on the 21st century literacy, literacy according to research. So there are various researches conducted on the 21st century literacies. So what does research tell us about? So there are a lot of findings that will really help us uh, believe about the 21st century uh, literacies. Success with technology depends larger on critical thinking and reflections. Teachers with relatively little technological skills can provide less useful instruction. So it only means, and it only tells us that technology-aided instruction are very important and vital in the delivery of the lessons. Because most of our learners are very, um, uh, they could be attentive when the teachers are good in fact, when the teachers or the, the, the teachers facilitated well the discussion with the aid of technology. Global economies, new technologies, and experiential growth in information are transforming our society. That is because of the advent of technology. Teachers need to prepare students for this world with problem solving. Look at this. These are very uh, basic skills that a teacher should incorporate in his or her delivery of instruction so that the students could be able to develop the part of following skills like problem solving, collaboration and analysis. These are the 21st century skills that we want to our learners, as well as skills with word processing, hypertext, LCDs, webcams, podcasts, smart boards, and social networking software that are central to individual and community success. Definitely, these are not, uh, these are not new to our learners. Uh, it may be some of us, some of our teachers or already seasoned teachers, uh, they are not they are not yet using this one, but it is a challenge to our system teachers to engage to this kind of platform so that they could also be uh, able to to adjust to what is new today, especially in the twenty first century. Teaching methodology should always uh, should be anchored on these following platforms using different uh, applications, technological applications. That's the research. That's what the research tells us when it comes to 21st century, um, 21st century skills. According to the National Council of Teachers of English in, the, in 2013, came up to research that reveals the following. So these were their findings. As new technologies shape literacy, they bring opportunities for teachers to foster reading and writing in more diverse and participatory contexts. Um, um, we have a result, no, a study, uh, I think it's a 2019, 2019 study of PISA, no, uh, stating that the Philippines is second to the last when it comes to reading comprehension. Because uh, I think there are a lot of factors. We could not single out one factor. It could not be, it could, it would not be a one factor reason why though why we have that that place in the, in the in that survey. That is because I think we lack on the integration of technology 
in fostering reading and writing to our learners. So I think and uh, technology aided instruction should be integrated always so that we can develop the reading and writing skills of our learners, especially in a very young age. No? Number two, sites like Literature Voice of the Shuttle, online fa fun fiction and internet public library, expanded both the range of available text and that social dimension of literacy. Uh, it only says here that we should explore the technology, the different platform, the internet as one way, one way of delivering our instruction. You know, we have a lot of, uh, we have a various ways uh, to connect with our learners, especially today we are in a distance online learning. Number three, research on electronic reading workshop shows that they contribute to the emergence of new literacies. I imagine uh, technology's ma main discussion here. Number four, research also shows that digital technology enhances writing interaction in several ways. So if we will become a teacher, you know, soon we will become a teacher, technology is one of the most important tool you know, to be used into the teaching and learning process. Uh, the, 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 these are the four uh, findings of research when it comes to reading and writing that student, that a learner could easily develop the reading and writing skills through the integration of technology. Number five, K-12 students who write with computers produce compositions of greater quality. Most of our scenario right now in the distance learning, the online distance learning, so we are using devices uh, like when, when we are required by our teachers to, to write, we are using computers. So it was also found, that, found out that there is a greater, higher quality, you know, and they are more engaged with the motivated toward writing than those who do not write with computers. So right now, everybody's, uh, everybody are using computers. That device would really be one of their uh, important tool in order for them to submit their tasks, requirements, writing, write-ups, and, and many more. Number six, college students who keep e-portfolios have a higher rate of academic achievement and overall retention rate than those who do not keep e-portfolios. So what are the, this, uh, what is e-portfolios? This is a compilation of your outputs using technology, using the computer. They also demonstrate a greater capacity of for metacognition, reflection, and audience awareness. Seventh one. Both typical and atypical students who receive an online response to writing revise their works better than those participating in traditional method. So in, the, in our case, no, we are replying. In my case, I am making use of the technology to correct, to make my re reactions to the paper that you submitted through online. No? Because according to research, works better, students works better when it comes to revision. No? than those who are not engaged to the use of online as a platform of submission of, of their requirements or papers in their schools. What else do you still have? Okay, so we are now in the second question of our exercise, functional literacy. Okay, questions? might be uh, given right now, the functional literacy. I know we have some discussion on functional literacy when we categorize the different uh, branches, uh, the different types of literacies. You know, we discuss about basic literacy, operational literacy, and the functional literacy. So the question number two goes like this. No? How can we integrate functional literacy in the classroom? How can we integrate functional literacy in the classroom or in the teaching and learning process. So in order for you to answer that, you may continue uh, watching this video, especially on the definition of functional literacy. Functional literacy is stresses the acquisition of appropriate verbal, cognitive, computational skills to accomplish practical results in specific cultural settings dubbed as survival literacy and reductionist literacy. According to the study, functionally, uh, functionally literary, literacy constitute the second level of literacy next to basic literacy. Functionally literate person is someone who is a step ahead of literacy, of literacy and maintains literacy activity throughout his or her life. 
According to UNESCO, it also defines uh, functional literacy defines as the ability to, of individual to take part in the significant activities in professional, social, political, cultural aspects in the society. Meaning to say, if you are a functional, functionally literate individual, you are engaging yourselves in the different activity in our society, uh, as to being a professional someday, as to a social uh, individual, political individual. Uh, politically engaged individual and culturally engaged individual. You become more functional in our society. According to another definition by UNESCO defines functional literacy as the ability of the individual to take part in significant activities now. What else? So let's go into details. Referring to functional literacy, UNESCO states the following. Literacy programs should be integrated and correlated with economic and social development plans. Meaning to say in order for a certain country, society to develop, to enhance their economic, uh, or there should be a progress in order for them to have an economic progress. So it should be integrated in the curriculum, in the, in the education, uh, no, integrated and correlated with economic and social development plans, involving students to become more functional in the society, talking about economic activities and social development plans of our society. Second thing, to be included uh, in the integration of, of, of the curriculum, teaching functional literacy, uh, the eradication of illiteracy should begin with population. So when I say illiterate, no, we have come to, we have come across to this def of this word when you are being identified as illiterate, you don't have the knowledge, no? It should be, no, we, we should eradicate, if not to eradicate, to at least to listen the number of illiterate individuals in our population. So that every individual, so you are illiterate because when you talk about literacy, simple or basic literacy is just simply uh, identifying an individual who is able to read and write. But because of the concept of the new literacy, it should go beyond reading and writing. So let's eradicate, or if not to eradicate, at least lessen the number of illiterate individuals in a society and become more functional you know, in, the, or in the society that we are living, you know, which are highly motivated and need literacy for their own and their own country's benefit. You know? When in our case, you know, basic literacy, uh, there is a 98% of literate individuals in our country. But there were no surveys or research conducted on the num actual number of uh, literate individuals when it comes to the new literacy, the concept of the new literacy. Okay, so let's proceed to the next slide. Hoarding is still in the UNESCO. Literacy programs should be linked with economic priorities. Okay, so we should integrate uh, literacy in our uh, across the curriculum and talk about how to prioritize economic uh, activities and carried out areas of undergoing rapid economic expansion. Literacy programs must impart not only reading and writing but also professional technical knowledge leading to greater lead, greater participation of adults in economic and civic life. So if we will become professional, and you are literate with the new literacies, you, know, you will have your active participation and there is greater participation of you in economic and civic life of yours. Continue. Literacy must be an integral part of the overall educational system plan of each country. So in our, in our, in our case, no? in our case, in our country, Philippines, so we have revised the curriculum, the teacher education. We have a new subject that we are going to, to learn this subject, the, the building of and enhancing new literacies across the curriculum. So that whatever subjects that you're whatever subject that you're going to teach in elementary or in high school or in college, we need always to integrate literacy in all or in across the curriculum. The financial need for functional literacy should be met with various resources as, as well as be provided for economic instrument. If you try to look at the literacies are, that we discussed right now, 
No, it's always in economic priorities, improving or economic growth and development of a certain country. Uh, that's one of the indications, indicators of a certain developed countries. If their population, their people are literate with the 21st century skills or literacy. So it, it is very important that our population, that our citizens are literate with the new or being uh, literate with the new literacies or the 21st century literacies. is what I said earlier, no? uh, we can really improve our, econo our economy, our country's economy, if the people, the learners, the population, the entire population are already literate and possessing the 21st century literacy. So improving functional literacy in the Philippines. So how can we improve the functional literacy in the Philippines? According to study functional literacy, education and mass media survey, the country registered 90.3% rate of functional literacy. So that's a, a study as research, no? Stating that there are 90.3% of people in our country who are functionally literate. Age 11 to 13 are the proportion, proportion of girls and boys who are functionally literate in our country. According to World, World Vision, the functional literacy rate went up at 76.53%. That's a good number no? to, to show that we have that, that rating. So let's have the, sec the second part of, of the discussion of functional literacies, new literacies, and multiliteracies. How are we going to integrate that one? How can we develop our learners? How are our learners able to develop those literacies that would really help improve and develop our country's economy. So, nakasalalay talaga yan sa ating mga teachers. No? How are they going to integrate that new literacies in the curriculum? So, literacy educators have the responsibility to integrate information and communication technologies into curriculum to prepare our students for the future that they deserve. So, it is a critical task of every educators like you, a future educators. You are also called a literacy educators on how are you going to integrate that one to the subject that you are teaching in the future. So a multiple learner, new literacy skills and practices are required by each new ICT as it emerges and evolves. Meaning to say ICT right now is very important that that every teacher should integrate in their subject that they're going to teach. We're always talking about technology here. Definitely, who we would like to develop a learner who is also a multiliterate. I always said in our discussion, we could not develop a multiliterate individual if the teachers or the educators is not also a multiliterate teacher. So it always begins with us future educators like you to consider yourself as a multiliterate individual so that we could develop a multiliterate learner. Okay? So when we can say that a learner is a multiliterate individual, the internet and other forms of information and communication technologies or ICTs are redefining the nature of reading, writing, and communication. Before, if you still remember, your teacher in kindergarten or in, a, or in a primary years of your education in the elementary, your teacher are using flashcards, written flashcards in the flashcards. Of course, we have also learned from that. But it is more engaging if we integrate that ways on how to develop the reading and writing of our students, if we integrate the ICT. No? So a teacher should be a literate, should be knowledgeable of integrating the ICT in making his or her learners able to read and write. New literacies need to be integrated into the curriculum to prepare students to, for successful civic participation and global environment. What else?
Okay, students will decide for, you know, in order for our learners to become multi-literate individual, the learners would really desire for what? A teachers who use ICT skillfully for teaching and learning. Imagine our learners right now, our, our 21st century learners, they are demanding us, teachers, to use and integrate ICT in your teaching and learning process. So the desire for that, no? Because it is very difficult to get the attention, the interest of our learners. If you are using the ICT, your skills in ICT, integrate that one in the teaching and learning process, the students or the learners are more engaged. That's a research-based uh, statement, no? Peers who use ICTs responsibly and who share their knowledge. So they would like also to have a peers or a classmates who also have the knowledge uh, of the ICT. Uh, they would have also um, the sharing of information and knowledge about ICT. A literacy curriculum that offers opportunity for collaboration with peers around the world. So as, as a teacher, as a facilitator of learning, teaching and learning process, we need to make an opportunities and chances of our learners to work in collaboration with the aid of technology. So if, if you try to sum up here on the, on, on the student's desire for a multi-literacy, it's always the fundamental or the basic uh, tool that would be integrated is the technology, ICT. What else? Number four, the instruction that embeds critical and culturally sensitive thinking into practice standards and assessment that include new literacies. Leaders and policy makers who are committed advocates of ICT. So, but, but it's sad the reality, you know, in some, I, I, in some schools, because of lack of resources, lack of teaching facilities, which really needs demand an ICT or a technology aided instruction, uh, they have lack of that kind of resources. They could not integrate. So our lawmakers right now, you know, those experts in education, we would like really to ask them to empower our teachers by, by giving them or allowing them to experience the technology, to utilize devices for learning. We are already in the 21st century. I hope that our government will really subsidize our teachers our education sector to improve the quality of instruction and the quality of learning of our learners. Equal access to ICTs for all classrooms and students. So that's what our learners desires in the 21st century. Gone are those days that our classrooms are, our classrooms are empty or full with those traditional learning materials. Okay, so to sum up, the students really desires a, a learning environment which is equipped with ICT. So in this study, noted four common elements as broader dimensions of new literacy. And we are going to talk about internet, technology, ICT. You know? New literacies are central to full civic and economic personal participation in global community. If we want our citizen, our population to become engaged and to, be act to become active, in economic, civic activities, personal participation, global community. So I think the education sector should always put in their, in their priorities the integration of new literacies in the delivery of instruction. New literacies rapidly change as defining technology changes. No? I think the, the basic, uh, uh, what they call this one, the basic, uh, support should always start with technology. The new literacies are multiple, multimodal, and multifaceted. Thus, they benefit more from multiple lenses seeking to understand how to better support the students in digital age. We are in the digital world. Our learners are living in the digital age. So I think we need to support our learners, our students, by exposing them in the use of ICT. Okay, impact of new literacies on instruction. So 
what are the impacts? How does it affect on the teacher's instruction, the liberal instruction in the classroom when we use or integrate new literacy? It would have an additional changes that will take place in instructional liter in literacy instruction. Engagement in literacy activities is being transformed today like at no other time in our history. There are multiple ways to view the changes in literacy and communication emerging from new technologies. Our audience will listen to you, uh, to listen to us or read the content but won't do both. Okay. There are really a uh, different impact when it comes to We are experiencing a power interruption. And now we are back again. We are just waiting for the internet to connect. I think we need to continue, okay? Where, where did this stop? Here it comes, okay. We have reforms in the multiliteracy, in the uh, educational reforms when it comes to multi multiliteracy. Uh, educational strategies like authentic, outcome based learning, project based learning, performance based learning, and cross disciplinary learning. These are the educational reforms. In traditional form of learning, it's a direct instruction, which the, sent, which the, the teacher is the facilitator of, which is the teacher is the main source of information. And not the and not the facilitator of the learning process. Okay, assessment for multiliteracies. Assessment moves from usual memorization or facts of facts and disconnected process to demonstration of understanding through application in variety of contexts. Media literacy skills are honed as students address real world issues from the environment. Okay, so as of today, our media literacy is very important, also as one way also of engaging our learners to, to this time, this kind of literacy. You know, they are very literate when it comes to media utilization. What else? Preparing teachers for multi So we need also to secure that our teachers are also possesses multi so that they can develop their learners and we could have a multi-literate type of learners. And New London Group understood that multi as multimodal ways of communications that include communications between and other among other languages using diverse channels within cultures and an ability to understand technology and media. 
recommended that teacher education must prepare teachers to teach multiliteracy and classroom strategies or pedagogy. pedagogy. So it is always right and proper you know, if you are going to become a teacher. You, know, you need to have, you, we are going to develop you to become a multiliterate individual for you to train our future learners to become also a multiliterate. So our methodologies, our strategies of teaching should always integrate the multiliteracy to our learners. Okay. Human 2002, and this was 2014, suggests that teachers integrate four components of multiliteracy in teaching. So these are the four considerations for us, for you, future teachers in the classroom to integrate the multiliteracy. Number one, situated practice leads students move towards meaningful learning by integrating primary knowledge. So make always a situational, uh, situational scenario on your teaching so that it would really help our students develop their critical thinking, analytical skills, the higher order thinking skills. Number two, overt instruction. Overt instruction guides students to the systematic practice of learning process with tools and techniques. Critical framing teaches students how to question diverse perception for better learning experience, engage learn our learners to a different use of different, different types of questioning. Transform action. It teaches students to apply the lessons that they have learned to solve real life problems. If you try to look, you try to look at these are the 21st century skills that we needed for our learners. Teaching multiliteracy can inform, engage, and encourage our students to embrace the multi multiplicity of learning practices. Research shows that effective instruction in the 21st century literacy takes an integrated approach, helping students understand how to access, evaluate, synthesize, and contribute, contribute to information. So we need to become critical when it comes to information, the validity of information. You know, let's evaluate and be critical of information that we gather, make sure that it is reliable and it is truthful also. For the teachers, teachers insist to encourage our students to reflect regularly on the role of technology in their learning. Create a website and invite students to use it to continue class discussion and bring outside voices. So although it's a very high demand no, to create a website, at least a social media platform could be used as to connect our, as to, con as to the connection of our learners outside the class. Although we have already our LMS, we have also the forum, you can also connect to our learners using that kind of platform. Give students strategies for evaluating the quality of information they find on the internet. So because that is very critical, no? everything is in the internet, but we need to be more critical when it comes to evaluating, synthesizing our information gathered in internet, especially in social media. So that's a great challenge, no? Number four, be open about one's own strength and limitation with technology and invite students to help. Okay, what else? In the next slide, number five, explore technology students are using outside the classroom and find ways to incorporate them into one's teaching. Use another, uh, use Wiki to develop multimodal readers guide to class text. Include a broad variety of media and genres in class text. Ask students to create podcasts to share with the authentic audience, okay? So meaning engaging our students into a real world in the technology, in the internet. We can use podcasts, we can use social media platform, Facebook, especially YouTube, you know? Because that could really engage our, our, our learners will be able to engage an authentic audience. Give environment, you no? Know? Refer to partnership of the 21st century skills website. That website would really help us know when we discuss the framework of the 21st century skills. What else? For schools and policymakers, it is also, no, you will also become a policymaker. A teacher is also part of a policymaker. So let's make it into consideration that the suggestion when it comes to multiliteracy. 
Teachers need both intellectual and material support for effective 21st century literacy instruction. So it's um, for the school administrators, no? management, administration of schools, now, we need also to support our teachers in order for them to deliver the quality instruction with the help of technology. So we need to invest with the technology because that's the demand right now. Schools need to provide continuing opportunities for professional development. Of course, we need to train our teachers when it comes to the utilization of technology, information, communication, and technology, as well as to the as up as well as up to date technologies, the up to date technologies, no? We need to teach our teachers. We need to mentor our mentors on the utilization and, of course, on the demand and to the new technologies that they will be using in the teaching and learning process for them to use literacy in the classroom. What else? So it is now the rule of the administrators of the school uh, policy makers, no? to also see to it the technologies that there are resources that will be used by the teachers in order for us to integrate literacy, new literacy in the classroom. Address the digital divide by lowering the number of students per computer. No? <laughs> That's in the reality. It's sad to note that there are some schools who could not provide a one, on, one computer ratio to one student. No? Ensure that student literacy classes have regular access to technology. Provide regular literacy-specific professional development of technology for teachers and administrators at all levels, including higher education. Requires teacher preparation programs to include training and integrating technology into instruction. So these are very basic. No? If you want to have a good quality, a better quality, best quality of, of instruction. Of course, we need to train our teachers, our facilitator to how to use technology in the classroom. Protect online learners and ensure their privacy. Of course, that would, would be also one of the issues. Affirm the importance of literacy teachers in helping students develop technological proficiency and adapt regular review standards for instruction in technology. Okay, so I think that's all for this time. Let's have our last and final question you know, about um, the integration of, of new literacies in the class. The third question goes like this. How important the technology in the, in how important the technology in having, establishing, quality instruction in the classroom. How important, again, the technology or the ICT in general, how important the ICT or the technology in establishing a best quality of instruction in the classroom. So that's our third question. And I think we end up our lecture for this. I hope that you have learned something from our lecture for this moment. Thank you so much for staying with me and learning with us. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and keep safe always. God bless everyone.